Good evening, folks. Let's turn the game off there for a minute. Welcome to this uh, TS Festival on uh, Portsmouth Direct Line. So, uh, this week we are celebrating the PDL, uh, which runs from Woking to um, Portsmouth. <laughs> oh dear. Um, that's a good start for the evening. And uh, so it's the route and some of the rolling stock that's uh, really great with this route, such as the 455, the 444. 423, the 421, and the 33. The 421 are better known as the 4 Sig, and the 423 better known as the 4 Vep. Um, so that's the, uh, the the stuff. So as I've said previously, um, the festival is all about sort of just enjoying some of the older content that's uh, or some of the content that's around, and uh, really looking at what um, what you can do when you what a wide selection of DLC um, and all the different locos that run on that route you can create much more realistic and uh, inter interesting worlds with it so uh, this evening we're going to take a look at a couple of scenarios and um, we're going to be driving a scenario which was very kindly created by Jack from Rock Rail Scenario so thank you very much Jack if you're on the channel if not, then thank you anyway. Uh, it's available on Steam Workshop, so you can go and download it and have a play yourself. Shows off the locos, and uh, it's a, quite a nice, enjoyable run. Uh, and then we're going to have a look at a little surprise that comes with the route that some people may not know about. So, let's let's get on with it, shall we? Let me start that up, and... Let's get the game going. Hello, everybody. My name's Matt, and I shall be your host this evening. So thank you for everyone for joining us this evening. We've got quite a few people on the channel. So, good morning, driver. Today you are driving the first leg of a rail tour formed of a 4 Sig and 4 Vep. Starting off here at Fratton Depot, take the train as empty stop to Portsmouth Harbour, where people will board the tour. Then it's a non-stop run to Haven't, where you will let more people board the service, and then another non-stop run to Hazelmere, which is the last stop for you due to a block for engineering work. Another driver will then take over the return leg. So, we're not going to make it to Godalming, unfortunately. There wasn't time in the scenario. This is going to take about 50, 55 minutes. So these old southern slam door units are a bit interesting to drive because uh, they, uh, they have a four position throttle notch, um, which is off, series, parallel and weak field. Um, which don't quite work the way that you would normally expect so 50% does give you more power than 20% but once you're in 50% dropping back to 25 does nothing until I uh, drop the power completely so um, what you do need to uh, make a note of is when you're, uh, when you're driving as you get up to the speed limit until you drop the power all the way back to zero it will keep um, it will keep on uh, applying power so I'm driving he says, going outside to just to double check. Um, looks like a four sig to me, and I've got a four vet behind me. So let's get uh, let's get moving a little bit, and then uh, so the, the the goal of this scenario at the moment is we're going to head from Fratton Depot, which is uh, where we are right now, and we are going to make a run into Portsmouth. Uh, then we're going to pick up passengers, turn around into the other cab, drive the other loco, and make our way up to Hazelmere. This first bit of the scenario is a little bit on the slow side because the speed limits down in this area, as you'll see from the way the track winds around, are a little bit on the uh, slow side. But uh, once we get turned round and uh, on our way to um, Hazelmere, then we'll get in speeds up to 85 miles an hour, which will be a little bit more uh, high speed. So I've also set a poll up on the channel, so if you're joining us in the chat, then there is a poll and it's which is your favourite um, train from the uh, festival including the one included in the route which is the class 450 let's go back inside so that uh, we can hear ourselves thinking so is it the class 444 the 44 the 455 the 421 the class 33 which is a diesel locomotive the class 450 or the class 423 which is the one that you would like to drive or do drive the most on this particular route? <clears throat> oh, here we go. First over speed already. We've only been driving a few minutes. <laughs> Never mind. 
Remember, when you're when you're registering your vote, it's an exclamation mark followed by the word vote without any spaces, and then do a space, and then put the uh, the option that you want to vote for, such as four 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 or four two three. Off the top of my head, buddy, I can't remember the difference between a four two one and a four two three, but I will let one of the uh, one of my trusty assistants. Um, expand on that for you. One is a SIG, which I think is a corridor independent gangway, and one is a VET, which is uh, something electro electro-pneumatic braking system. Like, um, vestibule electro-pneumatic brake. So the braking system on a VET is different to a SIG, if memory serves. And it's got vestibules instead of corridor, I think. I don't know. It's a subtle difference. <laughs> Crossing over. So the uh, the um, this one's got a particularly good set of brakes on it, which is going to be quite handy. As we come into Portsmouth, uh, we're following trains in, and we're going to be following trains back out again. But once we get on the main line, then uh, it'll get distinctly easier. I quite like the old uh, southern units, um, slam door stock myself. They feel like they've got a bit of uh, character to them. just because uh, you'll notice the train's actually still there in the platform that we're uh, we're coming up behind so our home signal is currently red That's it. he's making a move got a 455 in SWT livery coming out of the uh, this is Portsmouth and uh, South Sea station that we're coming up to So as soon as he clears the starter, we'll be allowed into the uh, platform. Although we're not, stop we're not actually stopping here, but we uh, obviously need to wait until we've got permission to proceed. Once we get going a bit, I'll get outside and we can have a look at uh, we can have a look at some trains and see what's going on. There we go, we've got that amber light, yellow light. So we're in the 15 miles per hour at the moment. Like I said, this bit, uh, as we head westbound from Fratton Depot into Portsmouth, which won't take us very long, it's just under a mile away, is uh, it's a bit on the slow side, but... Uh okay, we can carry on. When I was playing this scenario earlier on, I made the mistake the because we're about to get the 40 limit and I thought woohoo so I accelerated up to 40 and then realized the next signal was red it was that indicator that that, that alarm sound that kind of indicated to me I should probably put the brakes on looks like we've got a yellow up there now yep and then the next signals are red whoop letting it get ahead of me <laughs> is this driving at slow speed it's hard work That's better. Right, we've got the 40, it's time to rock it along. No, let's not do that. Got a red light. So we can actually see that train we're following is actually still there. So there is no rush, not just yet. That's it, we've got an amber, we can carry on to the next one. Oh, 
once we get through this little bit of uh, pain, then we can look around a bit more. So each of the lo uh, units um, comes in a couple of different liveries. So you can get the um, the 421 memory serves comes in uh, blue grey, and Network Southeast does does the VEP. The class 33 actually comes in a number of different liveries, such as BR Green, Network Southeast, Ralph Rake Grey. I'm sure I quite enjoy driving the 33, but I'm, I'm a I do like driving locos. The 33 also comes with some rather nice YGH Sea Lion wagons. Right, so we'll see Spinnaker Tower shortly, which is uh, a bit of a landmark in Portsmouth. HMS Victory is the uh, the ship that's in front of us. We did just see Spinnaker Tower actually a little while ago. It's a uh, large, strange-shaped uh, building that uh, reaches into the sky. That clears us into platform one. Just come to a stop now that we're all in. We are just about all in. Yep, so it's time to bring the train to a stop, and then we can let the passengers in. Yes, the frame rates on this trip. So Yenelo's just asked um, what the uh, frame rate's like, and the uh, this one is quite easy on the frames. In fact, on, on this machine, at the moment, I'm getting 30, but uh, in other areas, the route, I get 50 or 60. So let's just have a quick look outside while we're waiting for passengers. We've got HMS Victory over here. And there's Spinnaker Tower. So this is uh, this was our steed on the way in. <laughs> right, let's work our way down the platform. So on the other end of the train, we have a network southeast unit. Right, so let's just hop into the other cab and then make our way out. So we've got a uh, green light. Oops, zoomed in too far. Yep, we've got a green light to proceed. So our next waypoint is uh, is a stop at Havant. We haven't got to stop until we get there. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Right, so, uh, moving swiftly on. Um, I was actually planning that all night. <laughs> that says HMS Warrior, is it okay? I knew I'd get it wrong. Right. As soon as we get into the, uh, as soon as we get into the two, so we're actually following another train out at the moment, I think. <clears throat> there we go. Access to the 40 miles per hour in a moment. It's awkward. Dri driving it's a little bit, you've got to speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down, just because you can't back off the power at all. And until you get above a certain 
throttle notch. Uh, if, so the speeds work. Um, so series, which is the first notch that shows up on the HUD as 25%, only works up until about four miles an hour. Once you're beyond four miles an hour, you then need to be in parallel, which is the 50% notch. Um, however, parallel applies an appropriate amount of power, so you uh, you end up having to go up and down, up and down a bit. 15 miles per hour as you go back through Portsmouth and South Sea. So, yeah, 15 miles an hour, please. Slow down. Thank you. That's better. So we don't have to stop here, unless there's a red light, of course. Then we probably do. Once we get moving a bit, and I don't have to concentrate quite so much in the cab, then we'll have a look around at some of the other things. So seeing a little bit of the scenery around the outside here, so let's just have a, have a look here. This is Portsmouth and South Sea. So the white topped train here is a class 444 and the blue topped one is a class 450. You actually get the 450 in the pack with the uh, uh, Portsmouth direct line. There we're speeding because we're going down a hill. Comes down a hill a bit coming out of um, Portsmouth and South Sea. <laughs> Got another SWT455 coming in the other direction. Oops. Left away from me there. Oh, now we've got the 250. Uh, 250. We can't do 250 here, Matt. 225. We're going to get the 40 in a minute. So we're starting to get a bit more speed up now. Had a mild panic there when I thought that, that uh, double yellow light was for me. It's not. That's the the green light is for me. <clears throat> there we go. up to the uh, 40 and as you can see on the HUD we've already got the uh, the 80 coming up now so we can get a bit of speed on on our way into uh, Haven't. One thing you'll notice is as we speed up so as we hit the for getting up to 40 miles now the ammeter is coming right down which is basically meaning we're, lo we're losing power now so this is the limit of what we're going to get out of um, uh, parallel. So we're going to have to switch over to weak field in a minute. Then we up into the next one, and we'll see that the power then roll roars off, and we get another another boost of power. to the top notch. So now we're out and about, let's uh, have a look outside. I 
a 450 going in the other direction. So we're just coming into an 80 limit and then what, what happens is the um, the line is going to take a turn towards the east. We're sort of heading north, northeast at the moment. Um, and there's a junction which um, heads off to the uh, northwest. Uh, but we have to, we're going to be heading northeast, so this is the warning telling us we need to slow down for the 50 limit. down to the 50 now I can release so the sort of the normal gameplay that you'll find on PDL is either sort of the this there we go so this sort of express running um, or uh, you can do the sopping commuter line running um, or there are two or three places where you can run wagons around and so forth so it's actually quite a diverse route there's a reasonable selection of DLC that gives you some good variety of trains both in terms of what you can drive and uh, what you can uh, see when you're driving. And that's it, we'll come down to the 60. We'll come through the 60, then we'll get another alarm, right, probably here. Yep. And then we need to get slowed down for the 40. There's the alarm, the notification there. Slow down for the 40, which you've done rather quickly <laughs> that's better so welcome everyone to the channel this evening uh, for those of you who have joined um, uh, since we started this is the TS Festival for Portsmouth Direct Line uh, we're running a scenario that was very kindly written by Jack from Rock Rail Scenarios and it uh, features a, a run with a 4 SIG and 4 VEP unit um, into uh, up along the uh, the southern part of the uh, Portsmouth direct line, taking us from Portsmouth up to uh, Hazelmere. If you wish to play it yourself later on, it's on Workshop. Y3 Herbert asks, do I use rail driver or the keyboard? Uh, personally, I use the keyboard uh, or the Xbox controller. Um, at home, I generally use the uh, keyboard just because my Xbox controller um, isn't plugged in, which makes it not work too well. But at the uh, the office, I quite often use the Xbox controller because I find it it's nice having something a little bit more tactile to use um, than the keyboard. But it's also nice and portable, so that you can pick it up, use the controller, put it down, and it doesn't take up all your desk. Right, that's better. So we have a, a clear winner sticking out at the moment on the pole. So number one at the moment is the 444 and number two is the 450. And number three is the class 33. Great work driver, keep it up. The last lot of passengers have boarded the train. Now make your way to Hazelmere, and don't rush too much though, there are still stopping services in front of your train. And besides, we want everyone to enjoy their ride on this train, don't we? Oh, I did this notch up. That's better. So now we're accelerating a bit. So this is an interesting junction here. Um, so we're going to take the left line, which is the way that the route goes. But uh, in the real world, this junction here to the right actually will take you along what the line known as the West Coastway, um, which will uh, something on fire there, um, which will um, take you to Brighton. And that's not featured in this particular version of the in this in the Portsmouth direct line, but that's where that junction really takes you. It's 
better. So we're going to get the 85 now. That's uh, so okay. Good. Let's take another look outside. So this is the Network Southeast unit, and this is the Blue Grey. Almost missed the AWS. And that's because of the, because uh, of me sneezing, frankly. Um, so let's just get the speed chopped down on just a little bit, so that we're under 70. Thank you, Copplopper. <laughs> um, let's see if we can get a four-view standing by the side, don't we? Nope, AWS again. That's for the speed drop to 65. Sorry, I was just slightly worried there that that might have been an adverse signal, but it's not, so that's fine. That was a 444 coming in the other direction. Not gaining any power because until we get top to notch 3 at this speed, we can't. Sped up a little bit here. <clears throat> so we've got green signals, and we're about to get 85 miles an hour until we get 75 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, there, unfortunately, there is no passenger view on this particular unit, so I can't show you a passenger view. But in reality, a passenger view looks just like a Mark One coach, pretty much. Close enough, anyway. Get the visor out, put the divisor down. Let's take the power off since we're going into that seventy five. That's an alarm because we're getting dropped down to 60. So, um, so a bit more about the route um, while we're driving. Um, as you go from north from Portsmouth to uh, Woking, um, you actually it's quite a, an interesting ride uh, from a gradient perspective because you go up across the South Downs and the North Downs, um, which is quite uh, two quite decent um, hills to climb. You won't really notice it too much in some of the modern units, but uh, if you run a steamer over it, you'll certainly feel it. <laughs> but it does mean even in these units, you do have to keep an eye on your speed, because uh, like at the moment we're we're level, but we're about to start the climb up. Um, and uh, once you get to the top, then you've got to watch as your speed as you start going down the other side. And that's normally where I start speeding. <laughs> There we go, so we're on a 1 in 300 gradient now. <laughs> I 
good. Headphones are playing up. Please press 2. You want to see outside? Yes, you can certainly see outside. So we're sort of out in the countryside now. We've, uh, we're out of the area of... Uh, well, out of Portsmouth now. More trees and green fields. And speeding. I like to live up to my name. Right. Let's go up here and watch a train go whizzing past, because that's always fun. Getting up this first um, hill slowly. Still doing okay for signals, which is good. We haven't obviously caught up with something from uh, in front of us. That was because the uh, 40 mile per hour speed limit. Oh, that's the EWS Class 33, followed by a Dutch Engineers livery Class 33. Let's get some slowing down going on. So we've got single amber there, which means that if that's if this is our single amber, then the red is the next one, which was over here somewhere. So we just need to prepare to stop. tunnel so this is a uh, 421 or a 423 I must admit I can't remember which one I'm driving exactly <laughs> 421 is a 4 sig, 423 is a 4 vet. The difference is basically how they break. So we're able like to power up in notch 2, which is good. Yes, I've got EAX switched on. So, what's this signal up here? If you remember previously, it showed there was a yellow. It's still a yellow. Good. Carry on then. <laughs> Press the wrong button. <laughs> it's more an internal difference. Um, so, one of them has got regular air brakes. Um, and the other one, I think it's air brakes, and the other one has got electro-pneumatic brakes, which is really how they trans, uh, how they brake each of the, uh, how they send the signal down, sorry, to tell the trains to brake.
gauche. Right. Got another signal coming up. Let's see what we're out. I've been holding the speed back to let some uh, distance go between myself and the train in front. And it looks like we're still following a yellow, which is excellent. So we're now going down a one in one five five, coming up to Petersfield. So we've crossed the South Downs now. So you can find out more about the uh, festivals by going to the Engine Driver website. Um, the URL occasionally pops up on the um, on the chat window, engine-driver.com, and uh, they've also got links there to the um, pages on Steam. And to help you celebrate the uh, the Steam uh, the, the festival with us and enjoy the the uh, content, it's all actually on discount um, at the moment. Quite a decent discount, so uh, it's a good time to pick anything up if you're missing anything. So let's just see what's going on at Petersfield. Since the previous signal was a yellow, I have to assume this is a red signal until I can see otherwise. Looks like it's a yellow signal. Good. So this is Petersfield Station. So we've just had the AWS alarm for the uh, the yellow signal over here. That's notifying a speed restriction. So we're only actually, actually doing 50 under 50 at the moment, but the actual speed limit the line's 80. So with the drop to 50 coming up, there has to be an uh, an alarm in the cab. Right, just have a fly around and enjoy the route and watch trains. So I'm just basically hanging back on the speed to let some more distance go between us and the one in front. Oh, speeding. Watching the chat and I'm not watching the train. <laughs> Oh, it's a yellow one as well. Good. So we can carry on again. Let's get a little bit of power going on there. So we are now about nine miles from uh, Hazelmere.
this one will be a little bit further ahead now. Actually, it's a red signal in front of us, so... Slow down for this, actually get back in the driver's seat. Oh, it's got amber, yellow. Really needed to be in uh, notch four. <laughs> so that tells me we're a little bit closer than I thought to the train in front. Ah, oh, no, this is just a very long block by the looks of it. There's no point rushing too fast, which didn't have to stop. Three quarters of a mile yet till we get to the signal. Which is amber, so we can, or oh, yellow, so we can carry on. Speed up a bit. Where are we at? Seven and a half miles to go to Hazelmere. I try as I might, I couldn't come up with a pun about Hazelmere. It just didn't quite work as well as having... I haven't got a clue about a bland pun for Hazelmere. <laughs> oh, we got the green! That means we're, uh, we're in good shape, actually. <laughs> so we're making our way up, and we just made our way up the North Downs now. We're making our way up the making our way up the north downs. Downs. Here comes a four five five. So for those that don't know, the four in the beginning of four two one and four five five and so forth means that this is a third rail train. Uh, overhead electric trains begin with a three, like the three seven seven. Diesel electrics begin with a two. Diesel uh, mechanicals and diesel hydraulics begin with a one. Usually, like many rules, there's no such there's no such thing as a hard and fast. But that seems to be basically how it works. It gets a bit more confusing when you've got units which are both um, third rail and overhead, like the three nine five, <coughs> or indeed the three one nine.
So I think we've caught up a bit with the train in front, so we're starting to get uh, more yellow lights again. went green which is excellent <laughs> nearly there 4.3 miles so once we finish this um, I'm going to show something a little bit different. It's all on the Portsmouth Direct Line and it's actually all included with the Portsmouth Direct Line but uh, I, keep, I still talk to people that have never heard of it before so if you haven't heard of it before it'll be one of those what the <laughs> surprises. <laughs> Alright, let's see what this signal is we're coming up to. I'm using the up and down arrow keys, by the way, to do this, if you don't already know. Green arrow... green arrow? Green uh, light. Just about three miles now, we're still winding our way up the North Downs. Dave knows what I'm talking about on the chat. <clears throat> right, let's get some more speed up. Yellow light. Yes, Carano, these are separate add ons. So, in fact, if you go and have a look on Steam, you'll find that um, the uh, trains in the festival are all actually on discounts. It's a great time to pick them up. Uh, the train, the consist I'm driving is the 421 and the 423. So, the 421 is the 4 SIG. And the 423 is the 4 VEP, so I've got one on the front and I've got one on the back. They look very similar, but they're a subtly different train. And then the Class 33, which you've seen driving in the other direction a couple of times, is also a, um, um, is also a piece of uh, extra DLC. So I'm slowing down now because we're actually coming to where we're, we're our finishing point for the uh, for this particular scenario. So just as we're coming up to the end there, I just want to say one more time thank you very much to uh, Jack uh, from Rockrail Scenarios who put this scenario together. It's been very good. Uh, and if you want to uh, download this scenario and play it for yourself, then uh, you can do so. It's on Steam Workshop. The title of the scenario is RRS colon Slam Door Tour. I noticed that uh, Jack is on right now, so perhaps Jack, you can paste the uh, a link to the or uh, to the scenario for uh, folks if they want to go and have a look. We're almost at Hazelmere. We're just crossing the uh, cresting the top of uh, the North Downs. <laughs> Thank you. 
And as we come in, we'll, we'll see uh, the station in here. So speaking of that 33, there's one sitting over there in the platform. An EWS one by the looks of it. And it's got the YGH Sea Lion wagons on the, uh, in back of it. So at the end of the stream I'm going to be announcing another competition, so uh, sit tight, it won't be long. Got something fun to look at in a minute, more fun than this. Yes, that is actually possible. Right, so that's uh, stopped our train. I love the low th throaty uh, sounds of these things, with the old DC motors they've got. So, let's just wait for the scenario to finish, and then we'll have a look at the uh, the novelty item. And I'm only I'm going to run a scenario, but I'm only going to run it for a few minutes, um, rather than uh, wait, R rather than do the whole thing, because we'll be here too long otherwise. You'll get the point pretty quickly. <laughs> great driving driver, you've made the tour in great time. Another driver will now take over and take the tour back towards Portsmouth. Right, so that's that one. Once again, <clears throat> thank you to uh, Jack at Rock Rail Scenarios for uh, putting that excellent scenario together. You can download it from Steam Workshop. It's called RRS Slam Door Tour, as you can see here. Right, now, let us switch to this. We'll check out the graphics. And I will load something else. I'll be right back in two minutes. Okay, so when you talk train simulator, you normally talk trains, don't you? Well, you don't have to. You can do other things as well. So this particular route has a rather novel thing in it. So I'm running a scenario you can download from Steam Workshop called The Milk Run by Danny Leach. And uh, you'll see what it is in a moment. So today we will be delivering milk around Guildford. However, you'll have to make nine stops in total on the way. If you're late at the first stop, you may crash into the first delivery truck, who unfortunately has a record of driving of bad driving. Okay, well let's not do that then, shall we? So, I'm driving a milk float. We are around the Guildford area at the moment, so that train noise that you can hear is the um, is actually the main line, and with trains running up and down. And yes, the objective with this is to drop and deliver milk. So the uh, the little um, the actual line itself, which I'll show you on the map view in a minute, is uh, all part of the uh, the the route. And the milk float itself actually comes with the route as well. But it doesn't actually come in any scenarios, so you have to just know it's there. Or, as I say, if you go onto Workshop and download um, the milk run uh, from Danny Leach, then you can uh, just play this scenario through, and that'll do the job. So while we do this stop, let's just have a quick look. Here is the milk run. That's what this uh, strange looking line is here. And this is Guildford Station. So this is just a novelty. It's a bit of an Easter egg that's a bit hidden. So right now, on to your next stop, just ahead. And about you're about to sort of understand why I'm only going to do this for a little bit.
There we go. So it's a little bit. Uh, how do you steer it? So this is a this is a, actually a trick. So there's actually an invisible track under the road, um, and then this is actually pretending. To, it's a train pretending to be a milk float. So it's actually all you do is you just drive it like you drive a train forwards and backwards, and then it will follow its way around the road network. So it's simple. It's a novelty. It's just a good bit of fun. Wheels don't go round. That's what I said. It's a good bit of fun. <laughs> There's no horn, I'm afraid, Sparky. There's no lights either. So we'll do a couple more stops and then I think we'll uh, we'll call that uh, a day. So right, now on to your next stop just ahead. Just a word of warning though, the next customer has a dog. So we've got, you've got stress and we've got uh, action and adventure. You know, this is a milk float and we've got action and adventure. And uh, heroism. Because I'm going to deliver the milk, even though there is a really nasty dog there. No, Dark, I'm not going to make this end like the first time I ran it. When you when you're driving it, uh, there's a couple of um, nasty turns, and uh, yeah, <clears throat> if you drive too fast around those nasty turns, you uh, it, it tips over, and you end up with milkshake everywhere. So for everyone that's just joined, and this looks a little bit strange, uh, we do it. Which is this is just a little Easter egg um, that comes with the Portsmouth Direct Line route. And uh, if it allows you to drive a little milk float around the uh, the streets of Guildford, I survived the dog. Woohoo! See, master your machines, master your milk floats. So we'll get around this corner and I think we'll call that, uh, I think we'll have got the message by that point. <laughs> stop here. It's a little bit tricky to stop on some of these uh, until you figure out the braking. At the Mole Man, so this is um, a, an exclusive Easter egg that's just in this particular route. Um, and if you download the, um, the Milk Run scenario from Steam Workshop, if you've got the Portsmouth Direct Line, then you can run this particular thing, and then you can work out how it works and uh, use the assets in your own route. Right, on to our next stop, which is the other side of the railway line. So let's do that and we'll see what the, uh, we'll have a little bit of a drive round. So there's the station down there. No, nope, that's not the station. The station's on the other side. <laughs> Here we go. So, coming up after this, I'm just going to announce the... Um, what's the top speed on this thing? Mm, too much. Right, so now we're going to have to start doing some corners. So you'll notice someone's left a load of stuff in the way, so we're going to have to find a different way of going around. When I say find, I just mean drive, because the road will... Uh, it will change the direction on its own. So just have a quick a quick change to the uh, to the schedule of events.
Um, after we've uh, had a quick look at this, just drive around a little bit more, just get to the next stop so you can see the uh, the ride round. Uh, then we're going to have a look at um, one that there's uh, Darren Porter on has uploaded a very very good update to the Portsmouth Direct Line to Steam Workshop. So if you own um, Portsmouth Direct Line and I, th I can't remember, there's a couple of other routes you need to own. Um, then what you've actually then got is this rather fantastic upgrade to the Portsmouth Direct Line. Uh, which does a really new, nice job. So once we've uh, had just got to the next waypoint on this, then I will uh, fire up a scenario on the uh, the updated version, and we'll start that from Woking, the other end of the route, and we'll head southbound. And uh, you can just sort of see what the updated version looks like. It's a free download from Steam Workshop as long as you already own the bits, that, the required pieces of DLC, um, so everyone can uh, benefit from it. Right, I think that's enough of that fun and hilarity. So let's switch back to that. And go back to the menu. Right, now let's find the other version of the uh, Portsmouth Direct Line, which Darren has uploaded. So it's on Steam Workshop as DPS Portsmouth Direct Line. So, uh, Thanks for the link there, Steve. Uh, so this is going to be a scenario called uh, DPS 444 Woking to Portsmouth Harbour uh, on the uh, DPS Portsmouth direct line using the class 444, which is also in the uh, in this week's festival. So uh, as it's loading in assets from a number of different routes, it'll take you just a little bit longer to load it in than normal. Right, open the doors to allow the remaining passengers to board the train. Once passengers are boarded and the doors are closed, tab through the first red signal and proceed. All other signals are working fine. Please also obey all speed limits. Oh, fine. So this is the uh, DPS version of Portsmouth Direct, which has got different tracks, so the tracks all been relayed, uh, and there's newer assets. So as we uh, get um, down to see trees and things, you'll see the um, the trees have all been updated, and super elevation's been added on the route, which actually makes a nice difference to the driving experience. It's got the headlights on, daytime mode. down the end of the platform and watch the train disappear. Just occurs to me that's a red light. I probably shouldn't... Uh, I need to press tab, don't I? That was what the instructions said. That could have been a very short scenario. <laughs> yes, the instructions said to press tab at that first light. But then to obey all other lights. And that's our one there, I think, the yellow. Oops, I let the uh, AWS go off. Here you go, that's the first one this evening. I'm not doing too bad.
Right. So yes, we've got uh, yellow with the uh, feather indicator, which is because we're turning to the uh, left. So we have a look at the map for Woking, which is uh, the northern um, large end. We're going to be turning down this way um, and then heading down towards uh, Guildford. So what we've got here coming up, we've got yellow is our one, so these are the these twin red lights are the ones marking the end of the buffer stops. We've got a green now. So the train in front of us is moving a bit further away. So as you can see, they've got quite nice foliage. The colour of the tone of the route has changed slightly because of the different colourings of things. Right, so the scenario, I was just having a look on Steam um, to find out exactly who wrote this scenario, so they always like to give credit. Um, this is by Andy Freeman, um, so thank you Andy. Um, and this scenario is called uh, 444 Woking to Portsmouth, um, and it's for the DPS version of Portsmouth Direct Line. Just keep an eye on the lights in front of us. So our next stop is Guildford in 3.8 miles. So according to this, this is the repeater, our next signal is off, so we're able, like, okay to carry on through the station. Now on previous occasions when I played this scenario, it was around here that I got tricked, and I didn't, uh, I didn't notice the light. But we seem to be running a little bit slower than that time where I was nailing the speed limit before. So yes, if you've got Portsmouth Direct Line, then I would certainly recommend um, Darren's uh, upgraded version. It's uh, he's done a really good job. So where are we now? Just about two miles. So we've got a uh, double yellow light there, so I'm going to start slowing down. That means that one's a single yellow, that one is a double yellow. So actually, we don't have to panic too much. We've got plenty of time to get slowed down.
So we've got uh, approach control signal now, meaning we're going to get um, take, uh, taken onto a different route. We're just coming into Guildford now. Four fifty going in the other direction. Once uh, East Coast, once you've clicked subscribe, just go back into the workshop screen inside the profile menu, and uh, it will get on and do it all automatically. mile an hour speed limit coming up as we make the approach into Guildford. Sounds like I'm flying a plane, making approaches. I'm not flying a plane, that might be why I'm always over speeding. If mentally I think I'm flying a plane. Coming into Guildford. So our next signal to proceed has gone to green, so we're uh, good to go. Come up to a stop. Oh look, it's that road. <laughs> Alright, so I'll get permission to leave in just a minute. Oops, <laughs> a bit of speeding there, apologies.
it. Now we've got the 60 limit. Now we can start speeding up a bit. Until we find the one that we're following, anyway. So, uh, what do we all think of the scenery inside this tunnel? That would be my phone telling me it needs battery. So as you can see, it's a very decent upgrade to the uh, Portsmouth Direct Line route. And the addition of the super elevation really is quite nice. So as we get to some of the faster sections of the route, you'll see the uh, the, the the line um, super elevating. So Sparky asks, what's super elevation? Super elevation is where the track, so normally the track is level, but going around the corner, the track t uh, tilts gently to enable you to go around the corner faster. Um, and you'll see the train turn as it goes around there, or tilt as it goes around. It's not the same as a tilting train, uh, which is uh, in addition to the, uh, the cant on the track. And now we're speeding. Oh dear, I didn't even see that 70 limit coming. Oops. That's better. So you notice as we come around the corner here, the train has, has subtly tilted over. It's not a big effect. Um, Speed limit's dropping down to 60. Speed back up. I got the 75 as soon as it's reached the other end of the train. So, I think it's probably uh, that's probably enough of the um, of this particular route. So um, we just wanted to really show that this uh, really excellent upgrade is available. If you've got Portsmouth Direct Line, you can go and download it from Steam Workshop, and you can download this scenario by Andy Freeman as well, uh, which is uh, it's actually a really nice way to uh, to look at the route. It actually runs the entire length of the line from Woking to Portsmouth, running a high speed service. So as you can see, my next station is at Havant, which is right at the bottom of the line. Right, so I think that'll do for that for the time being. So what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? We are going to talk competition time. So while I uh, switch this back off, let's go and have a look at competition time. So we want your screenshots. Same deal as uh, last time. 
Uh, we want to know what your screenshots are. We want you to send us your screenshots taken of the... It says the screenshot must be taken on Donna Pass. What that actually should say is the um, Portsmouth Direct Line. So what we want is screenshots of the Portsmouth Direct Line. And uh, we want to include one or more of the trains featured in the festival. And you can send us as many screenshots as you like. The more the merrier. We don't edit them. Don't Photoshop them. Don't do any kind of um, post-processing on them. What we want to see is your unedited, what's the best you can get out of the game. Don't forget to use the mouse wheel so that you can um, change the field of view and the perspective. And uh, once you've got your screenshots, send them to festival at dovetailgames.com. Uh, and then we will go through them and we will uh, announce the uh, the winner and uh, and we'll let everyone know the prize is a loco of your choice from the DLC collection so uh, an interesting prize it's really good um, so let me just run you through the rules one more time send your screenshots to us and uh, send them they must be on the Pacific uh, I'll put my teeth back in. They must be on the Portsmouth direct line. So ignore what it says here. This was from the last fest, uh, pre earlier festival. So the screenshots must be on the Portsmouth direct line using uh, one or more of the trains featured in the festival. You can use as many as you want and all of them would be interesting to see. Uh, provide as many screenshots as you like to us. And um, if you, uh, you, when you take your screenshots, please do not edit them or do any photoshopping. Them. We want them straight from the train sim so that we can see how great it looks. When you've got your screenshots, send them to festival at dovetailgames.com, as it says on the screen there. One more time, festival at dovetailgames.com. Right. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this little session on the uh, Portsmouth Direct Line. I certainly have. Thank you to everyone who has uh, joined us in the chat. We've had some great uh, conversations, and uh, I look forward to the next time we all meet together. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye-bye.